Hi again, and welcome to part nine of innate immunology. This is the last lecture of the chapter, chapter 14 on um, innate immune system. And in this part of the uh, uh, unit, we're going to talk about fever. Now fever is known as the pyrogenic response, and it is an abnormal body temperature. Our normal body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. So anything above that is considered a fever. Uh, fever is actually a defense mechanism that is induced by our immune system. It helps to, um, uh, uh, to lessen bacterial growth and enhance activity of some of our own immune cells and immune compounds or molecules. Uh, the presence of a fever is an indicator of some sort of infection and you can have fever with a parasitic infection, bacterial infection, viral infection. Uh, it's not uh, bacteria specific. It is initiated by macrophage activity. Macrophages produce a set of cytokines called pyrogens. Those pyrogens are a group of interleukins in particular. Uh, we talked about the ILs, those interleukins. Uh, the properties of fever is that it will decrease the ability of microorganismal growth. So it uh, slows down the growth of microorganism, particularly bacteria. Again, it does help to activate or enhance some of our own host cell processes. It's believed that the cell cycle moves a little more quickly during um, uh, fever. We also have an increase in mitotic activity in fever, and that's because mitosis is being used by cells for repair. There are also certain host enzymes that will perform much better. Interferons, uh, some interleukins, and some other cytokines, chemoattractants, are actually more effective at a bit of a higher temperature than our own normal body temperature, which makes sense that we would um, increase the fever to be detrimental to bacteria, but at the same time be beneficial or enhance our own immunological activity. Now, the fever or pyrogenic response is a concentration-dependent reaction, and it's, um, it involves uh, phagocytic cells, the hypothalamus, and some chemical signals. So fever is activated by a set of cytokines produced by macrophages, and these cytokines are going to enter into the bloodstream. They will move throughout the bloodstream and eventually reach the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is the thermostat of the body. It's up in the brain, and it decides what the body temperature is going to be. And I can tell you this much. If you... Um, put on a fur coat and three blankets and lay down on the beach at, at uh, one o'clock in the afternoon on a hot July day here in South Florida. If you have a fever, your hypothalamus is going to tell your body that you're cold. So no, no matter what you do uh, when you have a fever, oftentimes the hypothalamus kind of overrides the environmental signals that your body is receiving and the hypothalamus tells your cells that you are cold. It does this because it wants to increase your body temperature. And so prostaglandins will be released by the hypothalamus. Prostaglandins cause shivering. Shivering is that the muscle contraction of those little muscles underneath the skin. And uh, the more prostaglandins you have, the, more, uh, the stronger that signal is, the more shivering you will have. This increases your body's metabolism. You are using up a lot of energy. And if you remember anything from, from unit three, all of that increased metabolism is going to cause a loss of some energy. And for us, that energy is going to be in the form of heat. So by causing shivering throughout the entire body, we can increase heat production within the body and thereby increase the, um, the inner or core temperature. Once you reach the temperature that the hypothalamus has decided you're going to have, then uh, you will stop shivering. Now, this doesn't mean your fever goes down. It's just being maintained at that temperature. Once your fever does start to come down, if the hypothalamus wants it back up, then you'll start shivering again. Once you start sweating, sweating indicates that your fever is coming back to, is returning back to normal. Your body temperature is now going to start coming back to normal. You'll start feeling better. Um, the body's way of cooling itself is through sweating. So if you have a really high fever, you're going to sweat a whole lot. And this uh, reaction itself is concentration dependent. And what I mean by that is the greater the prostaglandin si uh, signal from the hypothalamus, the higher the fever is going to be. How does the hypothalamus decide how much prostaglandin to produce? Well, it depends on macrophages. So macrophages may, in let's say a macrophage phagocytizes 100 bacterial cells, 
it's going to produce a concentration of cytokines that's equivalent to 100 bacterial cells. The hypothalamus sees that and says, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to pump out enough prostaglandins to tell, the, um, to tell the body to bring the temperature up to 38 degrees Celsius. If uh, the macrophage then phagocytizes a million bacterial cells, then the hypothalamus receives enough cytokines to say, hey, wait a minute, I need to make the body temperature 40 degrees Celsius, not 38. So the more macrophage activation you have through or, or cytokine production, pyrogen production by macrophages, the more signal the hypothalamus uh, receives, the greater the hypothalamus signal, the greater the prostaglandin production to the rest of the body. So here we have this same type of uh, process. Now we're looking, the example we're going to look at in this class is the pyrogenic response in response to a gram-negative bacteria. And when a macrophage here uh, phagocytizes this bacteria cell, you know, gram-negative bacteria have endotoxins. Remember that LPS, the lipopolysaccharide found in the outer membrane of gram-negative cells. The LPS uh, initiates macrophages to produce a cytokine called interleukin-1. IL-1 is excreted into the bloodstream. It goes through these blood vessels to reach the hypothalamus. Reaches the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus says, oh, okay, there's a lot of gram-negative bacteria out there. We better raise the body temperature so we can um, decrease bacterial activity and increase or enhance the body's own activity. So IL-1 received by the hypothalamus causes it to produce prostaglandins and prostaglandins are that pyrogenic or fever type response. So fever has both advantages and disadvantages. We know that it will slow down microbial activity or slow down microbial growth, but it, in, in um, other advantages includes the increase in transference, both uh, uh, production of and activity of. Transferrins are one of those class of molecules that our cells produce to tie up iron. So we're going to start pulling iron away from bacteria so they can't go through binary fission. It actually enhances the IL-1 activity. Now, when we talked about chemical signaling in the immune system and cytokine signaling, one of the things I would try to get you to understand is that um, every, all of these different immunological molecules, particularly interleukins, uh, have multiple functions. They have more than one function. So here in the fever response, we see a lot of IL-1 being produced because of macrophage phagocytic activity, but that IL-1 has other functions such as enhancing T cell production. So if I have a macrophage that is producing a whole lot of IL-1 and that IL-1 triggers fever, the increase in the body temperature then also enhances the activity of the IL-1 where it then can um, no longer is initiating fever but is actually uh, starting to increase T cell production. Why? Because there's bacteria and we, um, IL-1 is indicating that we need T cells. It intensifies the antiviral interferon response. So antiviral protein production and interferon responses are more active and more intense in a higher temperature. And of course, it's believed to speed up tissue repair. Disadvantages, however, fever is a funny thing. And um, with a really nasty um, gram negative bacterial infection, you can sometimes see uh, an increase in fever to the point that the patient's fever becomes detrimental. Uh, an increase, a really rapid, intense increase in fever over a very short period of time can cause a patient to become tachycardic. Also, if the fever just constantly goes up and the patient never really gets a break from the shivering or reaching the body temperature the hypothalamus is trying to reach, we can see um, a systemic acidosis from increased metabolism. All of that cellular activity that's going on to increase the temperature requires a lot of water, so dehydration is very common with higher fevers. Of course, electrolyte imbalance, when we start seeing dehydration, that's usually following electrolyte imbalance. Electrolyte imbalance will cause changes in electrical activity in the brain and in the nervous system, so seizures. And if we're looking at temperatures around 44 degrees Celsius, you're basically cooking inside your own body. So at 44 degrees uh, Celsius and above, usually death is pretty eminent. 
So just to review um, the pyrogenic response, make sure you know what a normal body temperature is. And in healthcare industry, we use the Celsius uh, ratio, so you our uh, um, indicator. So you want to make sure you know the body temperature in Celsius. And when a fever occurs, what does that mean? What are some benefits? What are some disadvantages? Um, Describe the pyrogens and how they um, are responsible for elevation of body temperature. What is the pyrogenic response in a gram-negative infection? So the example we showed that I showed in this particular short lecture of phagocytic activity in a gram-negative bacterial cell, uh, that was simply an example. It's not the only way that the pyrogenic response occurs, but it's the most common. And so then we just used a gram-negative bacteria as an example. So I just want to make sure you know that's not the only way that fever is induced, but it's the most common. Uh, so that's the end of uh, part nine and the end of the innate immunity chapter. Uh, so we have covered quite a bit in this, in this part of the unit, and I'm looking forward to uh, going over adaptive with you. Hope you enjoyed the chapter, and I'll see you on the next one.